Oh, yes. He's so shiny. The reject chicken nugget. <laughs> it's absolutely enormous. <laughs> it's just paint. It's just paint. Mm hmm. So on Midwinter Minis, we usually post useful, beginner friendly painting and wargaming tutorials, but, uh, aha, not today. I'm Guy. And I'm Hattie. And in this video, we're pretending it's 2017 again and resurrecting a dead meme from Beauty YouTube. But we're not going to be doing Guy's makeup, as fun as that would be. We're talking 100 layers of Warhammer paint, specifically Citadel paint, which is made by Games Workshop, the people who make the official Warhammer models and games. There are loads of different types of Citadel paint, from basic thin bodied acrylics to texture paints washes and metallics, one thick coat contrast paints, and even varnishes. So we're going to try out eight different paint types with really different looks and finishes. For the regular acrylic, we're using Mephiston Red, the colour of Blood Angels, the coolest Space Marine chapter. And to demonstrate this one, we'll be painting 100 layers onto a Primaris Space Marine. I mean, I'm actually quite impressed at how much detail there is remaining. It doesn't look quite as obscured as I thought it would be after a hundred coats of paint. I think to me, he just looks like a baby bell. <laughs> Cheese Marine. It's a shame that the last few layers were applied at the very end of the pot of paint. So I think we've got some dried paint flecks in there as well. The few steps before that looked a little bit smoother, but the final stage is a little bit gritty. It's chunky. Chunky boy in lots of ways. It just looks like he's been dipped in wax. Yeah, strong Quite. waxy vibes, especially with that color. Is there a market for Warhammer item shaped candles? Not no. Get on it, Games Workshop. Come on, give us some proper candles that people actually want. For the one coat contrast paint, we're using Talisar Blue. Contrasts are unique in that you put them on in one thick layer and they dry in an interesting way, avoiding high points and settling darker in the recesses, effectively adding a base coat, highlight and shade layer in one coat. To test 100 layers of this out, we'll be painting a Chaos Space Marine, specifically a Thousand Suns Rubric Marine, which has been primed with gold metallic paint first. Ooh, Talisar Blue. I mean, the colour is really, really nice. It looks really amazing, the first few layers over that gold, from turquoise to kind of a really rich dark blue, but yeah, it obviously starts to gum up details. Contrast paint has a totally different medium to regular acrylic paint, so it like seeks out the recesses a lot more than normal paint does, and that's why you see the kind of really fast gumming up of detail, I think. By the last 20 or so layers, it kind of just looks like it's been dunked in McCrag glue, and it ends up looking a bit like a baby bell again. But somehow slightly waxier, maybe it's like a glossier finish as well. We're basically just making Warhammer candles, I like it. This one particularly was really annoying to paint because the first few layers went on quite nicely because all of the paint was seeking out the recesses and sitting in them. But once the model stopped really having recesses and just became a big amorphous blob, the paint just started running off it and just falling on the floor, which was not ideal because it required a lot of cleaning. Plus contrast paints are quite stainy. So, you know, there's some solid blue splotches all over the floor now. Okay, next up for the metallic, we're using Lead Belcher, Warhammer's go-to silver toned paint. And to test out metallics, you can't go far wrong with a Necron primed black. I actually quite like the way this one turned out. He's really smooth and his no feature face is actually kind of funky. <laughs> I was just really annoyed that that hole in the middle of his Gauss blaster thing didn't close up. I was really, really hoping it would, but it just, yeah, in the last couple of coats, it was like, no, it's going to still be a hole. There's also something a bit different about the metallic paints. I found they're a bit more elastic-y almost. I don't know how to describe it really. Almost like a jelly paint. It's kind of the thing that you don't really realise when you're only painting one or two coats. When you're painting a hundred, it kind of becomes very obvious that what the actual characteristics of the paint are, because mm. you're seeing them like compound on each other. For the wash, we're using Nuln Oil, aka Liquid Talent. It stains the model a bit darker, but settles heavily in the recesses, adding instant detail. For the test, we're using a simply painted Nurgle Plague Bearer. If one layer makes it look twice as good, surely a hundred layers of Liquid Talent will make it the best mini ever painted? Golden Demon, here we come. Heck yeah. Here we are yet again with another kind of amorphous blob looking a bit like a candle, but it wasn't always like this. It wasn't always like this. Let's just wind back to like the first 10 layers and it actually looks pretty good. 
you know, one, two, three, four, five, six layers of non oil and it still looks good. It still looks usable. Like there's a point to actually doing it. Once the detail and color underneath just becomes totally obscured though, you know, obviously there's no real point. It is quite a nice black paint to be fair. But did you also notice what happens from about layer 50? For the first half of this mini, we were using the regular old null oil, the one that dries matte and looks just lovely. But then we ran out and we had to switch to the new version of null oil, which it turns out is a completely different paint. It goes on and behaves much more like a contrast paint and dries glossy and is a bit more gummy than the old wash paint. And this is particularly obvious when you use more than one layer of it. I think now he kind of also looks like he's wearing PVC. <laughs> bondage bearer. He ended up being really shiny and not at all what I expected from a hundred layers of a wash. I think honestly, you know, if I'm being truly impartial here, I really do prefer the old non-loyal recipe, which makes it even more bittersweet that we wasted a whole pot on this one model. If you're enjoying this madness so far, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with a friend. And if we get 20,000 likes on this video, we'll do a hundred layers of makeup on Guy. What? Come on team, don't let me down. Now for the technical and texture paints, there's lots to choose from. So we're gonna have four of our favorites. First, a ghrelin earth, which pulls in on itself as it dries, cracking like scale accurate dried mud. I wonder if this will just get bigger and bigger with more layers, or somehow the cracks will compound in the same places and make big cracky crumbly mess. For this one, we're using a glaive wraith stalker. It's absolutely enormous. It's totally ridiculous compared to the size it started at. And yeah, it looks like it just obviously got bigger. The cracks didn't compound and didn't make a big crackly crumbly mess. It just got huge. He almost looks like he's been battered with batter from a generic chip shop, not, not beaten up the reject chicken nugget. This one ended up actually being my favorite one by the end because it just looks so silly but it did take about 500 times longer than all of the other ones combined. The thing about these texture paints is that the effect only appears once they're dry and they need to dry in a cooler temperature because if you use a hairdryer, the paint won't shrink and crackle up, it'll just stay smooth on top, which meant that we either needed to leave it just on the desk to cool down, which takes about an hour per layer, or we could use the hairdryer on a cool setting to try and speed the process up. Which is why it's been almost three weeks since our last video. <laughs> Mostly this boy. The second technical paint will be Blood for the Blood God, which has a rich bloody colour but also dries with a very glossy finish, so it looks like permanently wet, fresh, oozing blood. For 100% lore accuracy, we're using a corn blood letter model for this one. Oh yes! He's so shiny. I really, really like this one. I think out of all of them so far, this is easily my favorite. A, because it was also quite fun to paint on, but also the final result is just insanely good looking. I love it. It looks ridiculous. Uh, it actually looks still pretty cool. Like I would be happy to feel the model that looks like this. He also feels super smooth and glossy. Also, I really love the fact that all of the paint has run down all of the long parts and formed stalagmite, stalagmites? Which one? Stalactites, because tights hang down. Ooh. Thanks, QI. <laughs> also, there was a magical, magical point about three quarters of the way through where the dripping stuff that was coming off his tongue formed uh, an interesting shape. Tubular. <laughs> okay, time for our third texture paint. For this one, we're using Typhus Corrosion, which is a weird paint that dries with a rough surface texture and heavily stains whatever you put it on, which is great for giving a quick and dirty corroded look to metals. I think a Plague Marine will show this one off pretty well. Thanks, I hate it. So first up, obviously it got absolutely enormous, which is amazing, but also it gets really heavy and really brittle. And I don't know if you noticed, but about a quarter of the way through, uh, a part of it broke off on the top because it was on the radiator and somebody knocked it off. It was me. And it chips so easily, so I'm amazed it survived to this point, really. This one very quickly became my nemesis while being almost sand-like, was also somehow really, really runny and, again, like the Talisar Blue, just dripped all over the floor. It has, however, made this almost furry texture on the block, which is kind of cool, I think. 
Also, I don't really understand what factor makes it happen, but on quite a few of the layers, you get this kind of lighter colored blooming that happens on the surface of the model, which kind of also does look a bit like rust, which is quite a nice touch, but yeah, I wish I knew how to actually make it happen. This paint is also an absolute nightmare to clean up and it totally just murders brushes. Yeah, RIP these poor boys. And about 500 pieces of kitchen roll. And my jeans. And the floor, and the table, <laughs> and my soul. <laughs> Okay, so before we show you the last paint, easily the nastiest of the bunch, let's show you how we made this whole mess. What started as an idea for a quick, low effort meme video accidentally turned into one of the most intensive and most time consuming videos I've ever made. Eight time lapses of minis getting ruined, fun as it is to watch, took bloody ages. Essentially, the two of us had to base coat 800 models with a brush. If you're interested in the setup and method, our pal Simon built us this little rig to keep the models in a stable position for photography, and all the models got attached to these little wooden cubes. Each model got photographed, the photo marked on a tally, and then a layer of paint was applied, as if you were using it on a natural model. So for most of them, that involved thinning with a tiny bit of water to get it flowing well. To help with the drying time, we placed them on top of an oil heater on its lowest setting, but for some paints like Agrella Earth, that would have made it dry super weird and its cracks would have been way too small. For paints that needed cooler drying temperatures, we gave them a blast on the cool setting using the studio's ultra grim dark hair dryer. Say hello kitty! <laughs> then time for another photo. Essentially stop motion with no motion. Great, now just do that another 799 times. No joke, the painting process took the two of us almost two full weeks of working hours, and even though at 800 base coats applied, it's technically the most mini painting ever done in a Midwinter Minis video, it was easily the most arduous and soul destroying. So, you ready for the final model? The last paint we'll try out is the technical paint Ard Coat, which is essentially a very high sheen gloss varnish. Great for adding a shiny look to gems and a slimy, sweaty look to skin. For this, we chose a Slanesh Demonette for no reason at all. For God's sake. <laughs> ah, she looks great. She looks like she's having a great time. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. Okay. I don't think I should comment on this one. <laughs> it's just paint. It's just paint. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it looks really nasty, obviously, but it's really, really smooth. And although it looks like gloopy, nasty mess, it's really hard and very smooth. And it actually feels really nice to touch like a polished stone or a marble. So, you know, it's got that going for it. You're nasty. <laughs> so, was this video wasteful? I mean, sort of. We blew through a fair few pots of paint to get these results, especially a grell and earth. But hey, we essentially paint minis for a living. We go through a lot of paint, so what else is new? We also ruined a couple of brushes forever painting on all that typhus corrosion. It's seriously nasty, nasty stuff. You could say the models have been wasted, sacrificed for meme content, but they'll hopefully do some good. All eight models are on eBay right now, and 50% of the proceeds will go to support the mental health and suicide awareness charity Calm, the campaign against living miserably. The other 50% we are going to keep. I mean, we had a heater and a hairdryer running for almost two weeks, and so we got to pay the bill somehow. Now, if you win one, feel free to do whatever you like with it. Maybe you can make some fun meme content for yourself. Try to paint on some details. Maybe cut it in half to see how thick the paint is. Maybe see how long it takes to strip all that paint off. Just don't do anything weird with that demon it, okay? We're trusting you here. Please. Before we go, let's do a couple of extra things. First, let's have a quick look at how heavy these models are now. Let's set the scale at zero with one of these blank wooden blocks, so now we'll know the weight of the actual models. Here's a normally painted model for reference. Aw, just six grams. That's adorable, he's so tiny. So pretty much the same model weighs 11 grams. Actually, that's lighter than I thought it would be. Oh, 10, lost weight. Mm. Non oil plague bearer. Six again. This is going to be pretty boring. He weighs nothing. Oh, the contrast paint's actually quite heavy. 17 grams, 18 grams. Very nice. Necron, 11 grams. Pretty respectable considering how scrawny the models are. The Ard Coat Demonette, only 7 grams. I kind of thought it should be a bit more than that, actually. Mm, that's quite surprising. The Blood Letter, 
Wow, just nine grams again. Kind of disappointing. Oh, 10 grams. I suppose what we really are interested in, though, is the two big boys. The Typhus Corrosion and the Agrellan Earth. The big lads. Big lad number one. Oh, 1920. Ooh. That's what we like to see. Okay, how about the biggest of boys? The heavy chicken nugget. Oh, 32 grams. He is by far and away the heaviest lad. <laughs> Not really surprising. Just out of interest, I wonder how they compare to the old metal models. Here's my metal Dark Angel Captain. <laughs> 43 grams. Not even close. Metal still rules. And also, just for funsies, I made a composite of each model before and after the process to kind of give you an x-ray look at how much paint has been applied. And by the way, if you see anyone pretending to be us in the comments, asking you to message them on WhatsApp or Telegram for a prize, it's not us. It's a scam. You can tell if a comment is really from us in three ways. First, our channel name will be highlighted. Second, there's a little verified tick. And third, your original comment will have our channel logo under it. We will never, ever ask for your money, apart from to support us on Patreon. <laughs> For just a couple of dollars, pounds or euros each month, you can directly support the channel, help us keep the lights on and making fun, entertaining and educational hobby videos for your viewing pleasure. And here are the most recent supporters who have done just that. Francois, Julius Bellata, Laughing Kumala, Remy Destigny, Mr. Baggy Boy, Ziamon, Adam Stern, Angusasa, Moopcat, Adam Craver, Paul Mann, Spruce Puma, Martin Schraups, Ian O'Connell and Executor. So let us know in the comments which paint was your favourite and let us know if there are any other stupid dead memes you want us to resurrect. And that's it for this video. Bye for now. Bye bye.